All right, everybody. Starting from uh, agents effective against nematoda, nematode, sorry, which is the roundworm. Uh, by the way, I I purposefully attached the picture of this potato because I know that so many of us, you know, uh, have such food at home which is actually spoiled, and then we just cut out the edges. And some I know uh, that there are some ladies who just, uh, you know, sometimes they don't even take care of the hygiene properly. So it is, it is very much important that you know that this round worm, which is by the name of nematode, okay, it is basically found more in food which is underground. Wait a minute, I've got a message. Beta, uh, uh, for, to everybody, I want to make a request. When I'm giving lecture, you can hold back these questions like what is coming in the test or why or whatever. And afterwards, by the end of the lecture, you can ask me such questions. You know, I will always give you some time. Because, you know, when I'm giving my lecture and when screen starts to pop up, that I will message in the chat box. So it really distracts me, okay? In it, I will answer your query at the end, okay, Bitte? All right. Yeah, so I was saying that you see all of these vegetables which are underground, okay, they are prone to have round worms in it, okay? So if you see these such, um, you know, impressions uh, on the food that you're taking, so it's very much important that you, you know, take care that you're not consuming such food which has, um, you know, round and uh, round circles. And then um, uh, even uh, you can Google other images, right? Okay, so how do we treat these? Uh, the, uh, for example, a person eats this, okay, and round worm finally enters into a human being, right? So how exactly this is going to be treated, we are going to talk about it. So the first drug that uh, we uh, will talk about is albendazole and mebendazole, okay? So uh, what exactly they do is, you, you know that microtubules are there, which form the skeleton, right? So they attack on the beta tubulin of the microtubule, okay? So uh, they inhibit its polymerization and microtubule assembly. So these agents also irreversibly inhibit glucose uptake by nematode. So the resulting glycogen depletion and decreased ATP production immobilizes the intestinal parasite, which is then cleared from the GI tract. Then if um, albendazole is used to treat um, cyst uh, cysticirrhosis and cystic hydatid right so what exactly are they look cystic hydatic is something which would affect 74 percent of the lung okay and two percent of the uh two sorry 70 percent of the liver and two percent of the lung okay and when we talk about uh cystic cirrhosis okay so it's again a parasitic uh condition right which is caused by tapeworm and in this condition, the brain um, muscles and tissues, they're affected, right? Okay. So, uh, mebendazole, sorry, wait. Okay. wait a minute, everybody. Okay. So, mebendazole and albendazole are used to treat round worm infections caused by multiple of you know these uh, round worms right so you see these are so uh, the, uh, whip worm pin worm hook worm and the names are mentioned so all of these okay uh, the infections caused by these disease uh, these round worms right they're treated by these two medications uh mebendazole and albendazole cause gi distress during short-term therapy they are potentially teratogenic. That means we are not giving it to the pregnant lady. Then is thiabendazole has been used to treat a variety of nematodes, but due to its toxicity, its clinical use has been declined. 
then we have parental pamoid right so uh, parental uh, pamoid it selectively produces depolarizing neuromuscular blockage and inhibit ACH uh, um, ACHE that is acetylcholinesterase of the worm resulting in paralysis so basically it paralyzes the worm so intestinal nematodes are flushed from the system it is useful for the treatment of infections caused by roundworm hookworm and pinworm then we have piperazine so its citrate blocks the response to ACH which results in altered parasite membrane permeability and paralysis it is absorbed from GI tract adverse effects are minimal it provides effective treatment of ascariasis and enteriobiasis then we have diethyl carbamazine so this agent decreases microfilar muscular activity causing their dislocation and it also disrupts their membranes making them susceptible to host defense mechanism it is a drug of choice to treat uh, liosis despite host response induced toxicity and it is a first line agent for the treatment of lymphatic filariasis and tropical uh, pulmonary asphonelia caused by uh, these two conditions Achha, what happens is the uh, if, if you will google it up okay so these two are again caused by parasite okay and when they would enter into the uh, organism's body then uh, they would you know infect the person and because of that these conditions would develop right so uh, obviously whenever we have a lymphatic condition so in that uh, you know the the first thing that you'll notice is edema would be there right so if you would google it up so you'll see that uh, edema is being caused and other things related to it okay so its plasma half-life for uh, of two hours may increase up to five fold if the urine is alkaline okay so host destruction of parasite results depending on the parasite in severe but reversible reaction including leukocytosis retinal hemorrhages and ocular complications tachycardia rash fever uh, encephalitis and lymph node enlargement and swelling right then we have ivermectin so it causes paralysis of organism masculator by activation of invertebrate specific glutamate gated uh, chloride channels so this agent is a choice for the oral treatment of on um, um, oncocerasis and it is a first line agent for the treatment of lymphatic filariasis uh, and uh, tropical uh, pulmonary isophenial ilia caused by uh, w bancrofti and b malai which we have already talked in the previous slide as well so in um, in onco uh, in onco uh, circassus the destruction of the microflare can cause mild or moderate reaction in up to 0.1% of the patient reaction may be severe and include bronchospasm hypertension and high fever uh, thank you everybody wait a minute don't leave